It was the 11th of September of the 56th century, when at last Tamara McKay instructed everyone to stop. Goliath and Karina had carried what remained to the tribe across the entire Isla Desert, from where the Cedos Mountains meet the Cedos Hills in the north, to the big gorilla tiger in the south. All the while, avoiding the ancient highways and hugging the gravel footpaths that meandered high and low. In a changing of fate, they had now stumbled across the true fortune. The group had encountered one of the fabled anima trees. Surely this was a sign that harmony could once again be found, and why not right here, amongst the red pines and marshes, on this stretch of the Cedos mountain range? There was even shelter nearby, amongst the remains of ancient foundations, that which resembled the tribe itself, enduring resilience at heart, with the potential for building strength and protection, as was the way of the Order of Harmony. In a way, it was fortunate for Vix that those who had survived the decimation of the tribe were not the warriors and survivalists, but those with less rugged constitutions. This gave her ample opportunity to practice her healing skills when tending to Shinichi's asthma, or when Squoen came down with another cold. On this planet at the edge of the galaxy, time, chance and chaos rapidly evolved the human race. Speciation took place and now those people of medicine and healing on planet Rim, whether in possession of architect technology or those with only their perception, are the foremost researchers of the humanoid species anywhere in the universe. No amount of information has ever made the journey off the planet. Vix had an even more traumatic past than most. Of the survivors, she had faced genocide before. The clan that she was born to was obliterated when a swarm of bugs ravaged those that remained from a bitter and brutal war between her tribe and another, both names of which were lost to living memory, as Vix herself was too young to remember. The now pacifist Hussar vowed never to wield a weapon of destruction, instead focusing on healing others and learning the intricacies of the body. Her own body necessitated a strict regime to manage her genetic goju's dependency, and as the tribe's healer, also managed everyone else's drug requirements. With renewed invigoration for stability and peace, the tribe set to work on building a new home. Whilst none of the chiefs, shamans or braves survived the downfall of their tribe, skills of legendary ability did, in the form of Shinichi. He was perhaps the most brilliant miner on the planet's surface, or below, though he was of no renown to the outside world. As a dirt mole who flinched at the sight of battle, and preferred to wield a bow over a club, it was hard to be noticed for anything but shame in the tribe before, though it was those like him who survived and stood amongst him now. A long time ago, Shinichi had found peace in his heart, but perhaps, one day, he could make something that was really appreciated, for one may marvel at another's artistic endeavours, but no one spares a thought for the labourer responsible for a hole in the earth, no matter how gargantuan the task. For now, the task at hand was not a gargantuan one for Shinichi, although it would be for many other labourers. Once the outcropping of rock that had formed around the ancient foundations, for that was the degree of its age and endurance, had been excavated, the group would have a remarkably stately hall to live in considering their situation. Just as dawn broke on their new home, the survivors gathered around the anima tree to share in meditation. All but Fai, who hastily excused herself after explaining that her stature simply couldn't fit around the anima tree at the moment due to the overgrowth of other trees. Of the survivors, Fai was the only one besides Squowen who could conduct herself in battle. On the day of the attack, while Squowen was resting in the healer's tent, Fai was alone again amongst the hills of the former home. Maybe it was because she had always been shunned due to her laboured breathing, but Fai had always preferred the company of animals rather than even her Yatakin kin. Although on this occasion, even Hyde the monkey was keeping his distance. Fai and Squowen led Goliath and Karina to their makeshift paddock soon after nightfall, while Shinichi cleaned the remains of the rubble away, and McKay finished her day by making a bed for Hyde by the fire before swiftly heading for her own patch of stone in the corner to sleep on. The monkey would enjoy his old bones being soothed by the fire when winter came. For this far south, the snows can come thick, with a roof over their heads, and the area around the animal tree deforested, the group could consider themselves lucky and thank themselves for the fruits of their hard toils. That was just the first day that the United Foundations tribe settled in Red Pine Valley. It has been just over a season since then, and the end of summer is in sight. 
Though fortune has smiled upon the tribe thus far, winter is fast approaching. So, this was the theatrical rendition of my new RimWorld playthrough. Uh, my first proper playthrough with Biotech. Uh, started on the Strive to Survive difficulty as it's been a while. I'm feeling adventurous, and from here on out, the, the United Foundations tribe will be toiling against blood and dust. Bring it on.